like a live case that we did and uh, Dr. Murphy will show some of these parts too. So that's it now. I have the pleasure to have with us Dr. Murphy. He's going to be talking now the next talk. Thank you, Pedro, for the uh, introduction, and uh, thanks for Terraflex for having the symposium. Also, thank for TVT for bringing us back after the co last couple of years of uh, COVID, so we're happy to be here in person. Uh, so my, uh, my talk today about uh, large bore access and closure, one size does not fit all. Those are my disclosures. So uh, healthy access uh, habits lead to excellent outcomes. And uh, planning is always the key. So don't compromise on access to planning and follow, follow the best practices. Uh, I've been a fellow at Texas Heart uh, during my training, and I'm happy to have one of my mentors here uh, in, the, in the audience. We were taught that access is everything. You have good access, you have good outcomes. Even if the outcomes for the primary case was not what, we, what you wanted, you, want, you don't want to add uh, more complication by having access issues. Uh, so uh, those are the, the steps for having key uh, healthy access. Number one, use ultrasound guidance uh, whenever you, you can and try to use, be 100% user in the lab to obtain uh, access. Uh, we always use micropuncture technique and uh, that allow us to not to commit to a large bore access unless we know the access is actually uh, in a good spot. Uh, Pre-angiogram using the uh, four French micropuncture small sheath to make sure the, uh, you stick the artery in a, in, a, in a healthy spot so you can be able to upgrade your sheath and then uh, uh, finish the case. Never rely on skin markings or palpations alone because uh, those skin markings can move, especially in obese patients. They can, they can change, so you have to have a, a very good anatomical and very good uh, imaging markers before you commit to the axis. Always do a final angiogram at the end of the case after you close to confirm full hemostasis because that's the key. Uh, you know, sometimes we, we get, you know, comfortable with the access and send patient to the, to the PACU or to the ICU and then get called later because the access was not perfect. So always, 100% uh, uh, of the time, try to obtain a final angiogram after you close, no matter what device are you using. So those steps I usually do in every case, whether I'm doing large bore access or even a small bore access, a PCI or a TAVR, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, so respect femoral access basics. So people sometimes see the crease and the crease can move uh, up or down. So it's better to rely on, on more uh, better marking, uh, you know, uh, with fluoroscopy and ultrasound and angiogram. As you can see in this case, you know, with, with, with morbid obesity, you have a depth of the artery that's 11.6 centimeter. That's a very, very deep artery. Uh, it, it's not only gonna be hard to obtain access, but also hard to close this access. Same thing here, and uh, as we know, we have uh, you know uh, 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 very uh, huge morbidity uh, factors, you know, especially in, in some region of the country in Midwest and, and South. So we have to uh, 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 respect those those uh, those uh, imaging steps rather than just go with the crease or go with the with the skin. I have this airplane model, uh, which I like to uh, analogy to use when I'm talking to physicians about access, and uh, it, it it resonates well with me. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Doing any case in the cath lab has the three stages, mostly. Number one is access. And number two is performing the actual case, no matter what was it. Number three is closure. And uh, uh, when you fly a plane, you have three steps. You have, you know, basic three steps to simplify it. Your, your, your takeoff, your flight, and your, and your landing. So access, in my opinion, is the takeoff. If the access was poor, the takeoff is poor. The whole flight will be bad. Performing the TAVR or the EVAR or you name it, you know, Impella is your flight. And then closing the groin is your landing. So any of those steps that doesn't go well, you're going to have a crash. So no one wants to have a crash, right? Uh, so uh, 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 th that model resonates with me and makes me uh, divide the case into uh, major basic steps and, and not to miss in any of those steps. Of course, I'm going to focus later on on the last step, which is the closure. Uh, we're going to talk about Manta later on, uh, but 
having, having you know, a good, uh, good entry and good uh, access will facilitate your closure at the end. Uh, as you know, transfemoral access has a lot of complications, potential complications. Many of them, uh, as you know, hematoma, pseudoaneurysm, you name it, vascular, uh, uh, vascular uh, vessel laceration, avulsion, uh, retributory bleeding, fistula, infection. Uh, uh, all these can be avoided, of course. All these are avoidable. And uh, most of the causes for these complications are, you know, related to patient anatomy, but also related to operator error. So uh, that's one in, in top and red. If the operator is not following the basic uh, best practice steps uh, and, and, and planning the case and obtaining good access uh, 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 to begin with, then uh, a complication will happen. Uh, you can see some, some of the case examples here where uh, the anatomy is really uh, horrible to begin with, and those can tell you you have to plan, plan the case differently. Uh, you know, if you have a very severe tortuosity, uh, like, like the case on the right side here, or you have severe calcification with stenosis. So you have to be ahead of time aware of the anatomy if you obtain good imaging. And, and, and uh, you always respect the calcium because calcium is the enemy of any interventional uh, procedure. Too much calcium means you're going to have too much complication, too much work to do to be safe in, in such case. Uh, as you can see here in the, in, the, in, the, in the bottom left, you know, there's a circumferential calcification. This vessel will not work with any device. You know, uh, it, it's, a, it's all uh, uh, 360 degree calcification. Um, here are some steps like obtaining vascular access using ultrasound needle. You can actually see the needle uh, by fluoroscopy and see the needle by ultrasound. Uh, this is a healthy access micropuncture needle, uh, micropuncture wire. Uh, very, very slick here. You always watch the angle when you, when you obtain the axis, the, the needle entry in the mid femoral head here, and you have your wire. You can see a transition between the wire and the needle. They're actually going in a straight, straight angle. There is no, there is no angle between the, between the wire and, and the needle. If you see an angle at this stage, you know that you stick, you stuck the artery from the side. Side, side stick is, is poor. So you have to take the needle out, stick again, before you commit to even any three or four French uh, uh, sheath and uh, take a small angiogram from this three or four French catheter, um, uh, use a, the subtraction, make sure you are uh, stuck in a healthy spot, and uh, uh, if, you, if that's the case, then you pursue your, your uh, 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 case and, and closure. This is here an example of uh, a poor axis where you actually stick the artery in a bifurcation uh, where you're gonna have a trouble at the end. Again here, try to not stick the profunda. Uh, sometimes we go and stick the SFA uh, if the SFA is too large and the bifurcation is high, but we do this in exceptional cases. But always aim for the femoral head. You have to use a safe margin between the, between the top. There is a distance between the bifurcation and the uh, inferior bigastric branch. That distance should be your healthy spot where you can be in the middle as much as you can to have a healthy access and healthy closure. And if, if that's the case, you're gonna see a major hematoma at the end. You see this 8.6, 8 8, 8. Uh, uh, big, 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 sorry, big pseudoaneurysm because the stick was, uh, was, uh, uh, was low. Uh, as you can see, there's multiple devices in the market. Uh, historically, there was a ProStar. I, I was trained on ProStar at Texas Heart at some point. Uh, this device now is, is, is falling out of favor uh, because it's complicated, it's, it's 22 steps. So the learning curve is a huge, uh, and I'm glad now I'm not using it anymore. Uh, uh, so we, 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 we try to use a device that's very intuitive, very easy steps for the operator to learn and to be reproducible. So uh, Proglide is very commonly used, probably the most commonly used devi device. I think it's off-label for a large port access. You have to use two to close a, 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 a taver or close a, 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 a impeller, impeller sheath. Uh, but it's very easy, you know, six steps. Um, uh, it has, it has its, its own uh, uh, on, on label and off-label uh, indication, and we're going to talk about what, uh, what are the best practices for Manta, which is we're going to talk about it in depth uh, today. There's two, uh, two types, 14 French and 18 French system. There are other devices, ProSeal and, and uh, NSeal. But currently, uh, in the United States, the only device approved for uh, large bore access is the Manta. Uh, large port access, is a, there's a huge need, as you know. Taver practice is, going, is growing every day, and uh, we cannot do Taver from six French. We still have to use a, a large port access for Taver. Same thing for EVAR to exclude aortic aneurysm, TVAR, mechanical support for impella. So there's a huge need in the lab um, uh, for large port access best practices. 
uh, and, and, and all, all the, they use, you know, femoral axis. We still do some cases from alternative axis, but uh, we're going to focus mostly today on femoral axis because that's the most commonly used. And that have shown that transfemoral TAVR beats surgery just because it's transfemoral. Uh, closure of these sites need, need to be done, uh, uh, you know, in a careful way using whatever device you're, you're comfortable with, but follow the best techniques. Despite the widespread use of those methods, still major, major vascular complications still happen. Uh, this is Mantaz, you know, uh, uh, it's, a, it's the first commercially available device uh, that's closed the large pore axis, 18 French and 14 French, and uh, uh, it can be used for any of the procedure we mentioned, uh, TAVR, EVAR, uh, 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 ventricular assist device support, ECMO, uh, you name it. Uh, the first trial was done uh, uh, in 2018 and 19, it's called um, um, Safe Manta Trial, and this was a, a pivotal study that led to the FDA approval. Um, um, Dr. Crager is my mentor. He's, uh, he's one of the, one of the co-PIs. Uh, this study was, was uh, conducted in multiple centers, about 20 sites. Uh, they, use, they use Manta for all, uh, all these patients, about 263 patients uh, in, in North America and U.S. and Canada. Uh, they, they, they use certain criteria, of course. They use systemic, uh, systematic angiogram for each uh, post-closure. Uh, it was used mostly for TAVR, but, uh, but also for, for uh, TVAR. And uh, that, that study showed many, many lessons we, we, we learned uh, initially. Uh, for example, it showed the median closure time is about 24 seconds, uh, which is now even has gone better with the, with, the, with the widespread use of Manta. Also, it showed that the complication rate was low, 4.2. But those operators, as you know, were, were selected operators. They have good experience with Manta. They use good selection. That's why the outcome was, was, was really good. And based on that study, FDA approved Manta to be commercially available in the United States in 2019. Those are the data from the SAFE uh, Manta trial. I, I went ahead and looked at literature and looked at some, some of the studies that was done. Uh, some, many of them are retrospective uh, studies. None of them is randomized. And uh, uh, as you can see, there's a data from uh, uh, widespread data. It's variable because uh, some of these trials were done or studies were done in people who were selected for, 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 uh, 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 for Manta closure. Some were actually all comers. So when you, when you use one device, uh, let's say for all comers, sometimes you will have extra, extra uh, complications. Sorry, I'm going to go back to the presentation here. So, so the key question is being selective and being uh, aware that one size does not does not uh, uh, fit all. So uh, I am I'm, I'm, I'm a big uh, big proponent of case selection. So I'm not going to say every case should go Manta or every case should go Proclose or or Prostar, but you have to be aware what the anatomy looks like and what the patient need to have a safe a safe closure. And I will go over uh, some of the criteria that uh, we uh, we. Uh, uh, so what, uh, what do I do in my day-to-day -day practice? Uh, uh, not, not one size fits all. Uh, I use 14 French Manta if the femoral artery is less than 5 millimeter. So we have a CAT scan. We have to make sure the artery is sized uh, appropriately with a good quality CAT scan. Uh, if the artery is uh, uh, 18 French, uh, 6 millimeter and above, then I can use 18 French. So that's one selection criteria. Uh, no significant posterior calcium because that might make the foot plates stuck in the calcium and cause complications. Verify the depth very well. You have to know how deep is the artery. The depth of the artery is the most common problem that happens with uh, all the complications we see in the lab. If the artery is too deep or too shallow, you have to know ahead of time. By doing the depth, lo depth locators, uh, even do it more than once to make sure we are doing it right, look at the CAT scan, and uh, 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 of course you have to use an angle, look at the ultrasound. All these factors can give you an idea how deep is your artery. Uh, so use more than one, one way to confirm your depth. Um, follow best practices to obtain access and apply appropriate techniques for Manta device deployment. Those two different steps. So obtain access very, very good, uh, in a very good, good way, as we, as we explained earlier. Spend time on access and also uh, know the device and how to do it uh, 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 technique-wise, because also not understanding the device itself may, might lead to complication. Make sure blood pressure is well controlled. Pay attention to ACT. Uh, the Manta device is not a large angioseal. I, I, I meant to make this, uh, this in the red, but it came as, as wide. 
uh, if you ask any, any of the interventional cardiologists nowadays and, and the, uh, across the country who doesn't use Manta, they will tell you, oh, it's a big angioseal. But in fact, it's not large angioseal because the technique is different, the, the, the concept is different. It's just because both are collagen, it, it, it doesn't mean they are the same. And we will show that, uh, <coughs> that uh, later. So I'm gonna show you this video quickly here. Hopefully the sound is not too loud. Enter a new era in large bore closure with the Manta Vascular Closure Device, a device designed specifically for closure of large bore femoral arterial access sites following the use of devices or sheaths ranging from 12 to 25 French outer diameter. Before the large bore procedure, determine the depth of the access site using the depth locator. This is fully inserted over the 035 inch guide wire until blood flow is detected at the outlet. Retract the depth locator until flow stops and note the position number at skin level indicating the access site depth. Add one centimeter to this depth to determine deployment depth for later device positioning. After the large bore procedure is completed, Closure begins by exchanging the procedural sheath for the Manta sheath over the guide wire. Fully insert the Manta sheath into the vessel and remove the introducer. Advance the Manta closure device over the guide wire. And after advancing the bypass tube, Fully insert the device into the sheath until a click is heard. Slowly retract the device and sheath at a 45 degree angle, observing the markings on the sheath until positioned at the previously determined deployment depth. Maintaining the device at 45 degrees, rotate the deployment lever to release the anchor and begin to withdraw the Manta device from the artery. Steadily withdraw the device from the artery until tension is felt and the handle indicator window shows yellow-green. Maintaining this yellow-green tension, gently advance the lock advancement tube to position the radiopaque lock. While stabilizing the vessel with the lock advancement tube, retract the device slightly until the click is heard. The access site is now sealed. The lock advancement tube may be retracted to assess hemostasis. Once hemostasis has been confirmed, remove the guide wire. The suture should be cut below skin level. The Manta anchor is low profile, non-thrombogenic and resorbable. The radiopaque lock remains and is angiographically visible to guide future access 2.5 centimeters above or below the previous site. The Manta device is available in two sizes, 14 French and 18 French. The 14 French Manta device is indicated for closure of femoral arterial access sites following the use of 10 to 14 French devices or sheaths with a maximum outer diameter of 18 French. The 18 French Manta device is indicated for closure of femoral arterial access sites following the use of 15 to 20 French devices or sheaths with a maximum outer diameter of 25 French. With the Manta vascular closure device, a new era of simplicity and confidence in closure is here. So as we could see, the, the, uh, the steps are very, uh, very uh, easy, very uh, intuitive, and uh, I will just conclude my, my, my talk today by saying Manta is very intuitive, very attractive, dedicated large uh, pore closure device. Uh, there is a steep learning curve, and we're going to debate today a, a discussion about different practices and uh, what the learning curve looks like, and uh, fast adoption in clinical practice mimics uh, trial outcome uh, data. Thank you so much.
Thanks so much, Abdel. That was a great talk about access and, and patient selection and how to avoid uh, complications. Now I have the pleasure for.